Today we're back looking at creepy true crime tech talks that will keep you up at night. Imagine waking up to this in your room in the middle of the night. No thank you. I have to give you a warning for this case, please don't watch if you're easily disturbed. Now what makes this case so unnerving is that this man could literally be your relative, your husband, your neighbour. It was 1957 on the Channel Island of Jersey. A young woman waited innocently at a bus stop. Suddenly, she was startled by a man coming up behind her and wrapping a rope round her neck. Ooh. He dragged her to a field and brutally awed her before fleeing. She was traumatised, but thankfully still alive. Soon, there were multiple victims reporting similar crimes. The women reported that the mystery attacker smelt really musty. Then, in 1960, the attacks would become even more horrifying. On the 14th of February, a 12-year-old boy woke in the night and was startled. A terrifying man was stood at the foot of his bed in a horrifying rubber mask. He was also wearing nail-studded wristlets. Like in his initial attacks, the intruder tied a rope around the victim's neck. He dragged the boy into a field and awed him. Shortly after, he broke into the cottage of a woman and her daughter in the middle of the night. It was 1.30am and the woman was absolutely terrified by the noise of someone entering her home. She grabbed the phone to ring for help, but the intruder had cut the telephone lines. The woman managed to escape and call for help, but by the time she'd got back, the attacker had awed her teenage daughter. The mystery attacker left a trail of terror everywhere he went. He was systematically targeting houses with children inside. It's literally he would like break a in film. and awe them wearing the hideous rubber mask. One of his victims was a boy of just eight years old. Residents in the local area were understandably terrified. They all feared being the next victim of the man that they were calling the Beast of Jersey. Now, police initially blamed a local fisherman for these attacks, off literally no evidence, and it was so compelling that the locals got wind of this and burned his house down. The innocent man left the area, but they knew it wasn't him because the attacks continued. The real culprit was a man named Edward Paisnell. He was a seemingly normal man with a wife. Horrifically, he was actually volunteering at the time, looking after vulnerable children. There were rumours that he was abusing both the children in his care and the staff. Meanwhile, investigators were taking ages to figure out who the Beast was. Because they blamed an innocent man. In 1966, a letter arrived at the police station from the Beast, and it stated, My dear sir, I think that it is just the time to tell you that you are just wasting your time, as every time I have done what I always intended to do, and remember it will not stop at this, but I will be fair to you and give you a chance. I have never had much out of this life, but I intend to get everything I can now. I have always wanted to do the perfect crime. I have done this, but this time let the moon shine very bright in September because this time it must be perfect. What does not that mean? one, but two. I am not a maniac by a long shot, but I like to play with you people. You will hear from me before September and I will give you all the clues just to see if you can catch me. Yours very sincerely, wait and see. He continued to break into homes and attack people. It wasn't until 1971 when Edward got pulled over for going across the traffic lights on a red light that things would all start to unfold. Police found the terrifying mask inside his car and also the coat with nails around the wrists. He was arrested and ultimately found guilty of the string of horrific crimes. He was given 30 years in prison. 30 years? He actually let out in 1991 on good behaviour, but had a heart attack and died shortly after. The only positive thing in that video is the fact that he's no longer with us. Thank God for that. But you're telling me that went on for how many years? Could you imagine living in that area? There's a man wearing a rubber mask breaking into homes and hurting people. That is literally a horror movie in real life. I'm in bed and I keep having to turn on the flash to check he's not at the end of my bed. That happens so many times right as I'm going to sleep. Like, I always start thinking about really scary things. I feel like everyone's like that. Like, I swear to God, right? As I'm trying to fall asleep, my house starts creaking, I think someone's on stairs. I'm from Jersey, lived there for 25 years till I moved over to England, and still a big story to us locals. I mean, yeah, of course it would be. Like, a man is literally breaking into people's houses, hurting them, wearing, like, a rubber mask. And he didn't get caught for years, by the way. So it's not like that only happened for a week or two. That went on for years. I think over 10 years or something like that. And then he got caught and arrested and obviously put into jail. And then he got let out in good behaviour. Why is someone like that let out of jail on good behaviour? And then, thank God, he died in the end. The punishment is ridiculous. I can't imagine what 
what was going through the survivors' heads when they heard it. The sentence he got was far too light, but it's the fact that he got let out afterwards. Like, I'm so sorry, sometimes I look at these criminals and what they've done, and it makes me think, why are they being let out? Whenever it comes to good behaviour and being let out, it should be for small crimes, you know, like, let's say, robbing, like, a thing of milk from a shop. Not going around and hurting people like that. Are you insane? This 12-year-old girl unalived her entire family so oh. she could be with her 23-year-old boyfriend. Jasmine Richardson was a normal kid until she turned 11 years old. She started dressing in a darker aesthetic, liking some darker things. She would okay, post on websites for like MySpace and VampireFreaks.com telling people she was 15 instead of 11. Because the thing about Ooh. Jasmine is even though she was 11, she didn't look 11. She always kind of looked older than she actually was. Yeah. She started sneaking out to hang out with her new older friends and would meet older guys. By the time that Jasmine was 12 years old, she was in a full-on relationship with this freak, 23-year-old Jeremy. And just Ooh. so you know, just because she was lying about her age on social media, this guy was fully aware that his girlfriend was 12 years old, a literal preteen, and he would also tell people that he was a 300 year old werewolf. So for context, we are dealing with a full on freak. She obviously looks a bit older than her actual age. However, you can still tell by looking at her, she's a child. Have a look at that man. Like I'm telling you, all these people, they always look terrifying. He's a done fan, it's a 300 year old vampire. Jasmine's parents were horrified when they found out that their 12 year old daughter was online telling people that yeah, she of was course. older than she actually was and that she was dating a full on adult. So they did their best to keep Jeremy away. Jasmine and Jeremy didn't want to be apart and they thought that the only way that they could be together is if Jasmine's parents were no longer alive. Mm -mm. What started out as jokes became real plans to not only unalive Jasmine's parents, but her eight-year-old brother as well. On April 22nd, 2006, Jasmine secretly led Jeremy into her home where he brutally unalived her parents. Jasmine's eight-year-old brother, Jacob, heard the entire thing while hiding in his room holding his lightsaber for protection. It's like heart shattering. It's unclear who actually unalived eight-year-old Jacob because Jasmine and Jeremy blame each other for his death. Jasmine and Jeremy thought that they were soulmates and now with her parents out of the picture they were going to be together forever but in reality that was not the case. They were actually quickly brought to justice because they were bragging to anyone that would listen about what they had just done to her entire family. And of course as soon as they were arrested the soulmates turned on each other. Jeremy was sentenced to three life sentences but due to Jasmine's age she only served six years in a rehabilitation center and four years on probation. She was fully released into society in 2017 and has been out living in society free as a bird ever since under a new name actually a lot of controversy in this case because of that but what do you think do you think jasmine is a victim a child manipulated by a predator or do you think if she's old enough to do the crime she's old enough to do the time that girl was obviously manipulated and abused by that man in that relationship i don't know if she was manipulated into murdering you know there's a difference between being groomed and then murdering people including her eight-year-old brother she unlives her baby brother due to time unforgivable exactly it's the fact that she's out now and she's not even that old i'm not 100 percent sure on her age but if that happened whenever she was 12 and she spent 10 years behind bars she would have been 22 in 2017 so she should be 20 or 39 right now and she's got a new identity so like imagine literally falling love with her and then like you find out one day oh my god my literal wife is a murderer who murdered her family and her baby brother i wonder if a haunts her thinking about all the stuff she did probably not a lot of times these people don't have remorse they know exactly what they're doing they don't care about it and then whenever they get arrested and have to face consequences of their actions they turn on their partner remember how they were soulmates and they were going to stay together forever and then the minute they got arrested they turned on each other that's what it's like with all these people they realize oh god you know i've done something really bad i've just ruined my life what am i gonna do i'm gonna throw the person who i've done it with under the bus it happens every time travis alexander will always be 30 years old because you him. When I turned 30, I thought about that. And when I turned 31, I realized that I'm older now. Why have him so many times? Why his throat? Why him? I wish I could answer that. We're not seeing tears, that we're not seeing remorse. How do you feel about that opinion? When I cry, they're just gonna think my tears are fake anyway. So. This clip shows a sit-down interview with Jody Arias, the woman who brutally unalived her ex-boyfriend Travis Alexander after finding out he was taking another woman on a vacation. Jody showed up at his house, driving all the way from California to Arizona. After taking several photos with Travis and spending some time with him, she brutally unalived him as he was taking a shower, catching him off guard. Five years later, Jody would be convicted of first degree on a living. Two years after that, the courts would finally sentence Jody to life in prison with no possibility of parole Good. after two juries were hung. 
unable to decide if she gets life or the penalty. Jody is carrying out her life sentence at the Perryville Prison for Women in Arizona. That's terrifying, isn't it? The fact that you're in a relationship with someone and then they might end up killing you. You never really think about that, do you? People have been murdered by their husbands, wives, friends, family members. This is why you always have to look at everyone with a side eye. You know, one day your best friend could literally murder you. Imagine that happening. The autopsy photos of this man scared me, okay? So I'm not gonna look at them photos and I wouldn't recommend you doing it. Because I know for a fact they're gonna be awful. Men murder their partners slash beat them all the time for no reason. At least she had a reason. Psychopaths kill for no reason. She probably isn't remorseful. Okay, so I personally hate that comment because to me that just seems like they're trying to justify it. It doesn't matter what he done, it doesn't mean that she is okay to do what she done. Like, it just is wrong. If I remember correctly, I think he was cheating on her. In that situation, what you do is you break up or divorce. You don't go and do what she done. Like, psychopaths do what she done. So you can't really sit there and be like, oh, she's not a psychopath. I think she is a psychopath. And yet again, from the interview, she had no remorse. Like, how is that not a psychopath to you? When I turned 31, I realized that I'm older now. Holy smokes. That statement is kind of eerie, though, isn't it? I know people who died whenever they were 16, 21. I'm 21 now. Like, it's crazy to think that I'm older than them but they're no longer here but I'm still here. Whenever I was younger like whenever I thought about people dying like I didn't actually realise what it was. Like whenever you're gone you're gone and she took his life and yet again people like her are raising as to why you have to keep an eye out on everyone. You don't know what they're planning. This is the moment infamous killer Jaime Osuna appeared in court charged with his second murder after killing his cellmate in a gruesome attack. Sometime in the early hours of March 9th Ooh. Jaime Osuna methodically tortured and killed Luis Romero at Corcoran State Prison. Osuna is accused of using a makeshift knife to decapitate and dissect Romero, removing an eye, a finger, and a portion of the man's lung, as well as cutting his spine and removing his eyes. It is believed that the victim was conscious for a portion of the crime. New reports are raising questions about how prison guards missed the hours-long sadistic torture and beheading. Exactly. Osuna was originally jailed back in 2011 for the brutal murder of Yvette Pina in a motel. He had this to say. I did sadistically, premeditatedly, deliberately tortured and murdered Yvette Pena. I don't have no sympathy. I'm sadistic. I really don't care. I'll do it and I'll do it again over and over and over. Okay, well that right there is the definition of terrifying. Yet again, whenever you look at these people, if you look deep into their eyes, there's eyeballs, but there's no soul. Like, I feel like nice people have, like, light, you know, they have a soul behind their eyes. You can actually see, like, a happy person living. These people, you don't. You literally just see dead eyes. Bro needs to be at Black Dolphin Prison, not regular jail. Okay, so I'm gonna guess Black Dolphin Prison is a very, very scary and notorious prison in Australia. If you're gonna get put into any jail, you probably don't want to be in one like that. That's a demon. It's Exactly, like you can literally see the demon in his eyes and it's the fact that, like he just doesn't care. Like he was talking about if he could he'd do it again. Keep in mind he took the life of an 11 year old boy. No way this was only a second murder just the second time he was caught. That's what I'm thinking. Like with a lot of these people, especially serial killers, you know they only get caught after like 30 kills. Especially if you go back like 30, 40 years. There was literal serial killers who were killing people every single week, if not every month for every year. And that went on for years. Isn't it crazy to think that whenever a serial killer gets caught, the murder they committed probably isn't their first. Think about Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy. Do we even know how many people they kill? Obviously, there's like a number everyone says. It could be so much higher than that. But anyways, guys, that's really fun to do there. That's some creepy true crime TikTok. It would seem like a more true crime TikTok, so let me definitely will. Chris Becker, subscribe and see you all tomorrow for another video.